Well, thanks for watching this episode of Answering the Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're highlighting ministries all around the world that are serious about doing just that. Today, we're in our own backyard down in Miami, Florida, visiting the Miami Rescue Mission, a.k.a. the Broward Outreach Centers and the Caring Place. And with me is the President and CEO, Ron Bromit. Ron, thank you so much for spending hey, some time it's, with us. It's going to be glorious today. Brother. It is. It is. We've been filming for a couple days, and you guys are busy. There's a lot of work to do in South Florida, and we hope you guys inspire many to this kind of ministry. But tell our viewers a little bit about your ministry, how you and your wife came to Miami Rescue Mission, and maybe some of the history, too. Well, you know, the Miami Rescue Mission has been serving the homeless and serving the needy. We've been really proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ since 1922 wow. and I cannot believe it Chuck but I've been here almost 30 years wow. and I have a different story I have a different testimony but yeah. I got involved back in the early 90s and what a tremendous growth we've had over the last two three decades yeah. and the people that we've been able to help to come through our doors they're broken yeah. they're homeless they're full of despair and yet they not only gain a, good, a new life they gain yeah. eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now the message has always been the same, yeah. you know, uh, forgiveness yeah. of sins through Christ, new life through Christ. Yeah. But the, the way that we handled people, it wasn't just the old alcoholic that would get drunk on the weekends. Now you mm -hmm. had someone with serious substance abuse. Mm -hmm. And along with that came uh, mental illness as well. Yeah, exactly. And you know, homelessness, there's a, maybe a stigma to it or maybe even some misconceptions. It's not just the al addict or the alcoholic. It's it's affecting the whole families as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there was more women and more children sleeping right. out of vans in, right. uh, in uh, buildings that were desolate. Wow. And as they passed it, they said, can we do something? And so in 1980, they added to the men's services mm -hmm. the very first comprehensive center for women and children mm -hmm. in the state of Florida yeah. to deal not only with single women mm -hmm. and their issues of prostitution yeah. and mental illness and right. drug abuse, but domestic the moms, violence, domestic that. violence. Yeah, yeah. That was with the moms and the kids, right, yeah. and so that was a big step for us uh, to have them. And we still today have centers for women and children in both both counties. Right. In the yeah. 90s, right. we went up to Broward County, yeah. uh, where we again enlarged our footprint and actually opened up a center in Hollywood. It was right. one of the very first centers in Broward County. Wow. At that time, Fort yeah. Lauderdale was fighting with Tent City, yeah. which had thousands of people living under tents and squalor. Wow. We were the very first. We were wooed yeah. uh, by the city of Hollywood. And yeah. today we have two centers there. We have the Center for Men and we have the Center for Women and Children. Yeah. They're right next to each other, yeah. uh, patterned off the same successful programs right. we've had in Miami. And we're serving uh, about 1,100 people yeah. every single day yeah. uh, that, are, that are really suffering from all sorts of problems in life. Yeah, so it's all under the umbrella of the caring place. That's amazing, that's amazing. Well, there's a lot to talk about. Stay tuned, we're getting some more interviews from some of the staff and some of the program graduates who are actually on staff as well. Positive testimony so you can see how God is using the Miami Rescue Mission and the Broward Outreach Centers to uh, answer the call. I was suffering a pretty bad drug addiction and I'm so grateful that they cared enough to want to see me make it because I honestly felt like I was going to die if I stayed in the streets. Well, I, I thought I had, I had hit rock bottom before, you know, with going to jail and all that stuff, but uh, I, I found myself uh, doing all other substances that really uh, took me to that rock bottom. Um, I found myself in a bad spot and, and homeless. The mission and vision of our organization is to love um, the homeless with Christian love. Um, to meet them where they're at, um, to serve them holistically, and uh, to transform their lives. Um, we try to do that through education, through uh, case management, um, as well as uh, just everyday interaction. So here at the mission, we feed first physically and then spiritually. Because you can't talk to someone when they're so hungry and they're so hurting, they're, they're dirty. and. They need a shower, they need clean clothes, they need hygiene, they need shelter for the night. No matter how many times you mess up, we're here to help you get back on track. The mission has a heartbeat to help those that are lost, least, forgotten, 
not wanted, uh, mentally ill, not mentally ill. We're just there for all sorts of people. We try to do the best, to do one thing that we believe in this mission, and that is no one is homeless. So this is a temporary home for people. They just lost their home, and we are here to help them to gain another home, to gain back everything that they used to own in the past. Uh, it's a Christian base, and everything are, are support groups because you need to have a certain degree uh, of, of therapy to be able to deal with life-controlling issues. Not only about addiction, we're talking about uh, anger management, uh, we're talking about family issues. Sometimes in life you have financial issues and I had to overcome um, the, the repetitiveness of those financial issues, of not being, not making myself my priority. Well, coming into the program, uh, before I came in, I made a decision uh, to go the distance. Whatever it takes for me to to get what I need to get to, to stop this madness, to stop this addiction, to stop smoking crack, I was willing to go to the distance to, to do that. Our heartbeat is transforming lives, um, changing lives, and it's what we, we love to hear the many, many stories and um, how lives are transformed. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature in 2020. Ministries like homeless shelters, children's homes, mission sending centers, and more. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're excited to be in Miami, Florida, visiting the Miami Rescue Mission and also the Broward Outreach Centers. With me, Ron Brummett, the president, CEO. Uh, there's a lot going on as far as sharing the gospel. Lots of uh, people still need to hear. Talk about your approach to evangelism and how you guys are sharing the good news. Well, you know, this is going to sound foreign for, so many, so, for many people. It would be great to tell you that when people hear about the mission, they hear about the discipleship program, that they're beating our doors down, and they want to know about Jesus, and they want to get saved, but that's not the case. Yeah. Most people that come through our doors are because they're hungry, yeah. or they're tired of living on the street. They've been sleeping in their own clothes for days. Uh, they've been sleeping behind buildings. Mm -hmm. They've been trying to eat out of dumpsters. They have been begging at the corners. And you know, wow. you and I and others right. have seen people at the street corners and, and begging. Yeah. Right. And they're hungry. Yeah. And so we have, and said for many years, hope often begins with a meal. Yeah. So when people come in, uh, they may say, yeah, I want, what they're really looking for is they're tired, they need a place to rest, and they need something to eat, and they need a change of clothes. So yeah. we do that every day. Yeah. For those that are in our community in Miami, over 500 come in four days a week. They get a, a meal, they get a change of clothes, they get a shower, they get some hygiene products, and they also get a one-on-one, -on -one, not just a preaching at them, you know, a ch chapel service, that, that's and later in the night. Mm -hmm. But they have people come one-on-one, -on -one. how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What's going on in your life? Can I pray for you? Yeah. And when they're here, yeah. They're going to have morning chapel. They're going to yeah. have Bible studies. They're going to have Bible lessons they have to complete. Right. They're going to be in prayer circles. They're going to have people praying over yeah. them for deliverance and for encouragement in their life. Mm -hmm. And the people that say, you know, I came here, I was just going to stay here two or three weeks. Right. And they end up saying, you know, the Lord got a hold of me. Yeah. <laughs> and I surrendered my life to the Lord. And I understood what you're trying to do. Well, I love it. Um, you know, we came in early this morning. I know you guys serve breakfast bright and early, 530 in the morning, 6 o'clock. There's a devotion. Your team is just pouring into them, and they're hearing it, and they're leaving here fired up, and it gives them something to think about for the rest of the day. That's right. And then yeah. when they come back, you know, they're, it's living testimonies. You guys are demonstrating the gospel in word and deed. Well, for us, we, want, we don't want to, we don't want to cookie cut or anything. Right. You know, people come to us, very similar backgrounds. You know, mm -hmm. if you're having an addiction, you have an addiction, but you haven't lived in that man's life. Right. And so when you, you see people on the streets, when you see somebody sleeping on a bus bench or someone begging at a restaurant or at a, yeah. at a convenience store, 
you don't know their life. Right. Yeah. I mean, you think, if they can beg, they can get a job, but you don't know if they're suffering from mental illness. You don't know if they came from across the seas and had served in a, in a, in a war and have yeah. PTSD or right. have some other debilitating uh, yeah. mental illness. Right. You don't know that. that right. You don't know if they lost their, their wife and their kids in a tragic auto accident and they right. just lost their mind because of it. You don't wow. know that. Right. Yeah. So when they come to us, we're going to love on them. Mm -hmm. We're going to encourage them. And it's, it's, it is time, it's not time driven, it's goal driven. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good. We're sharing the good news. Uh, keep watching. We've got some more interviews from some folks who have graduated the program, people that are doing the work of evangelism here at the Miami Rescue Mission, all the way through the Broward Outreach Centers. Keep watching. I was introduced to the Lord at an early age. You know, my mother had told me once that no matter where I might find myself in life, when there was nobody else to call, I can call on Jesus. And I found myself one day in such a place. And I called on him, and he heard me. He opened a lot of doors for me that I thought were like nailed shut. Since I've been here at the Miami Rescue Mission, I've, I have hope now. The Miami Rescue Mission has uh, designed uh, from, from the beginning of when you walk into this facility that you will be taught the Word of God. And we use the tools of mailbox lessons uh, to share with our men when they reach a certain stage, early stage of the program. Once they've gotten the cobwebs out and they've knocked the crack out and they've knocked out about 30 days, we start presenting them the gospel. We have Bible studies that we do on a daily basis. We have chapel services that we offer them since the day they stepped foot on the place. And then there's also teams that go out on the street. We call it the crew. Christians ready, equipped, and willing to put feet on evangelism. And they go out throughout the year. They meet like once a month. They go out together. They go to the places where we know the homeless are congregating. Uh, they'll give them hygiene. Uh, they'll talk to them. They'll They'll strike up a conversation, they'll pray with them, and then we follow with a van. As you can see, I'm representing this shirt, and um, they go out, they pray over them, and they give them um, hygiene items, and they go out with volunteers and staff with the hopes that they will come back and join the program. We've been very successful, I believe uh, 48 so far have come back with these volunteers and staff members to join the program. It's our uh, privilege to be able to go outside, uh, to meet those on the streets, uh, to be able to witness to them, to be able to evangelize to them, uh, to get them off the streets and into the campus. So that's one way that we're evangelizing. Like for example, like every morning we start our devotion at 6.20 and that uh, they congregate in our chapel. We have 350 men, between three and 350 men every morning in the chapel and then we discuss the business of the day, where they have to go, where they have to work, where they have to study, so on and so forth. And we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We try to uh, encourage equality. We try to enc encourage people to stay away from judging people. We try to encourage people to understand we are all children of the same God. Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh. I'm the executive producer at Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for praying for us. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answer the Call. We're talking about Discipleship Next with Ron Brummett, the President and CEO here at the Miami Rescue Mission, working through the Broward Outreach Centers as well. So you're working with women and men, and that word discipleship, it's a church word, but you know, we're building them up in the faith. They've got to learn how to walk and be obedient. That's what Jesus said, right? Teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. So that takes time. So That's correct. And you know, as men and women go through our program, they're going to be exposed to the Word of God, 
to the teachings of the Word of God. They'll yeah. start attending church at some point, a local church. Right. And uh, we have a specialized discipleship program. The whole program is discipleship. Yeah. But we have one that's really uh, on steroids, right. where they go to classes two hours a day, they have two hours of education, they have four hours of Christian service assignments where they yeah. help around the ministry, and they are becoming responsible. I mean, yeah. they're dressing up. They, they have to dress up in you know shirts and you'll see you've seen interviewed right. some of the people right. gone some of the classes they're dress up they look different they smell different they act different yeah. we have to be careful it gets pride you know yeah. everyone right. gets a bible we're always looking for good study bibles and yeah. try to use them at the same uh level for everybody we want them to spend time with jesus we want yeah. them to be able to go with him to prayer we want him them to be able to share their faith in a practical way with others. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of all this, once they've done all their classes mm -hmm. and have done all the hard work, right. we have a yearly graduation ceremony. I was going to say, I saw some graduation pictures. Yeah. That's got to be cool. So some of them have never graduated high school or anything, so you're that's a big right. moment for them and their family. Well, you're right. They Or yeah. they haven't graduated something in a long time, or right. they a lot of dropouts. They'll right. say they went to 10th grade. Yeah. But here they are. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like the demonic right. that Jesus comes to that was, you know, all out to there. And he says, what happened to him when yeah. Jesus healed him? He was right. in his right mind. And he was fully clothed. Yeah. And That's so these cool. are these are these are like the men that are and the women that are coming off yeah. the street. Right. Now you see the fruit. You, right. They are in caps. They are in gowns. Right. They have their family. They have their church friends. Right. We have our donors and our supporters that have right. poured into the ministry. Right. They're there. Yeah. And here you're watching them and being they're being applied. Right. because it's tough yeah. to get off the street and it's tough to stay yeah. off the street right. they, they really can take it in they soak it in like a sponge yeah. and they will uh, oftentimes take that and motivate themselves so we're very yeah. thankful for all the activity in our community activity center right. and then we also have spun off uh, health clinics Wow. So we have three health clinics now, and they are all free-based, so it's mainly for the homeless and for the needy, right. but they get tremendous services. Yeah. They get the, the nurses there, they get a full workup, they get yeah. their blood workup, yeah. they get, for the first time, if you've been on the street for 10 years, 5 years, 4 yeah. years, you know, you've let your body down, you right. don't know what's inside of it, and here they're getting real health care with spirit-filled people wow. that love them, and so holistically, yeah, you know, good. what Jesus said, for your whole body, your that's whole spirit, right. your whole mind. And we have been so blessed, so yeah. blessed to be able to do this for so yeah. many years. And we are looking for even a brighter future because we are yeah. close right. to celebrating our 100 years of service. Yeah, that's amazing. So God has sustained it because there's still work to do in the city and we hope it inspires many. So stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship from some of the staff, some of the volunteers, so you too can answer the call. Get involved with the Miami Rescue Mission and the Broward Outreach Centers to make disciples. Keep watching. I am 21 months clean now. If I can do that and they can do that for me, help me do that, show me how strong I am, show me how much God loves me, they can do that for you, for your friends, for the people you know and would like to see get help for anybody. Well, through the Alpha program, I got uh, a very good knowledge of uh, theology and Bible. Throughout the entire program, um, I would say, it gave me a really good knowledge of the, of the Bible and made me want to serve and read my Bible every day and share it with others. I've learned to maintain my finances. I've learned to be more confident about, not about, but be more confident in trial and error, be more confident while I'm being tested in the fire and walking through the valley. Intentionally do that with our um, chaplain that's on site where he's just uh, intentionally meeting with clients every single day, uh, motivating them, encouraging them, meeting where they're at and helping them to grow in Christ. The Education Center is where they are able to further their education. We also have volunteer opportunities um, where you can help further their, help them with the basic math and reading, um, computer skills, uh, so we're always looking for volunteers. If you say, my passion is education, we have the REACH Education Focus Group and they just focus on making sure that when our men and women come in and they're going through the education department that it's more than just being on the computer. They have someone sitting with them, 
maybe uh, helping them one-on-one. -on -one. They have panel discussions. They'll bring in um, uh, expertise about jobs and careers and resume building. There's 40, 50, sometimes upwards of 100 people that will walk that stage and graduate our program. And some people say, but graduate from homelessness? Yeah, some of these guys here have never graduated anything. And to, to let them know that they've reached this uh, point of their life and they're able to walk a stage in cap and gown and receive a diploma that they finished a graduation may not mean to a lot of people but I've seen grown men in tears because they've told me I've never been able to graduate anything. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Whatever you want, if you want a new life, come into the Miami Rescue Mission. If you want to meet Christ as your Savior, come into the Miami Rescue Mission. If you want to become a better person, come into the Miami Rescue Mission. I want to invite you to take a look at our website, revelationstvseries.org. It's produced by Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world to shine their light and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're hoping by now you've got a hunch by the Holy Spirit to try to get involved. Ron Brummett, the President and CEO here at the Miami Rescue Mission, the Caring Place, Broward Outreach Centers. You need some people to do the work in ministry. So if somebody wanted to get involved, how would they do that? Well, you know, a lot of churches that come alongside of us, it's called our faith partners. That's one of the easiest way to get involved. We have different ministries where you can come in in the afternoon and actually minister to people one-on-one. -on -one. We have a, a meal ministry. We have an outreach ministry where we go out into the highways and byways with uh, people from various churches, and they'll go out and they'll actually minister to the homeless and the needy. Yeah. You know, we're serving so many people, and I am grateful. I've been here a long time, yeah. and I get a chance to see so many of our volunteers. In fact, I just met one today before we started taping, wow. and uh, she's from Chicago. She's here for the summer, but she wants to give back for the summer. I say, wow, wow. Yeah. of all the things you could have done with your summer, what an honor for you to come and be a part of our volunteer. Yeah, so good. we always need volunteers of yeah. all different types. Yeah. You know, most people, Chuck, they want to do uh, feed the meal. Yeah. Well, we need people to prepare the meal. Yeah. We need people to serve the meal. Yeah. We need people to clean up after the meal. Right. We need people to go out and purchase the meal yeah. and bring it in. Maybe prepare a meal yeah. for two or 300 yeah. people, your church, your organization, your yeah. business. Come yeah. in, yeah. Uh, uh, partner with one of the big companies. You know, uh, yeah. I'm not going to mention any of the fast food companies, but some of the restaurants. Right. And, and that happens. And bring in a whole meal for people. That's yeah. one way to get involved. That's and cool. everything to, that we need people, just simply go to our, our website, caringplace.org. Yeah. On that site, you can learn how to volunteer, you can how to be part of our faith groups, you can right. how, to, how to donate financially, you can mm -hmm. be one of our prayer partners, yeah. and it's really the simplest way to get involved is yeah. go to caringplace.org. We're on social media, you can go to Facebook at Miami Rescue Mission, mm -hmm. and, and also Twitter is No One Is Homeless, and yeah. that's a good way that we connect, especially with yeah. the younger people. Oh, yeah. You know, we that's love right. our younger people that are coming out. Yeah. They are really on fire to, to for causes and to change the world and change yeah. our community. That's awesome. Yeah. And and really we are we get funding from all different sources. So yeah. we don't have our funding in one basket. Right. But the majority of our funding for all the years that I've been here and before has been through individuals. Yeah. And th those are moms and dads and individuals and businesses that have come alongside of us mm -hmm. and decided, you know, we're going to do something for you. We're going to become part of the Meals a Month program. Right. We had last year over 9,000 volunteers. Wow. I don't know how many thousands gave uh, gift and kind items like yeah. the food items and so right. on. Right. Uh, businesses get together. Condominiums help us out right. and again for people I really want people to get involved I yeah. want you to say you know something this place sounds like a really good place it's a solid place I want to get involved go to caringplace.org uh, you can look at the volunteer opportunities the, how to donate to our thrift stores how to make a difference in our food drives and our hygiene drives and our toy drives and our school supply drives and it's very simple we'll get back to you we love all of our volunteers we love all of our donors uh, and I would just encourage people to do that. That's awesome. Hey, answer the call. You heard it. God's putting it on your heart to do something. You're not everything to everybody, but you're something to someone. So pray about it and uh, keep watching. We can talk to some more folks who have been getting involved. 
talk about practical ways that you can be a part of the body, reaping a harvest in these last days before his glorious return. You know, you see me today having on a clean shirt and a tie. It wasn't always like that. I was in a position where nobody wanted to be around me. I didn't want to be around myself. But I gave God a chance. He reached way down. He picked me up. He cleaned me up. He put me on some solid ground. And I thank God and those that he's put in my life to help me to see what I couldn't see. If you're anything like I was, give the program a chance. Because I was at the end of my rope but I didn't want to die. And when I came here, I instantly felt hope. I felt like I was welcome. I felt like people actually cared. There's lots of ways to get involved with Miami Rescue Mission. You could volunteer. If you're interested, please, in volunteering, not only in our education, but also uh, serving a meal. We serve every day, Monday through Sunday. Um, lunch is from 11 to 1, dinners from 3 to 6. Well, there's so many ways that people can get involved here. We have our Meals a Month Club. We have simply volunteering in one of the departments, whether it's the kitchen or if you're a church, you can volunteer in the chapel. So outreach is all through the year. We have Christmas in July, we have Thanksgiving, and then we have the big Christmas outreach. So everyone has a different focus, but hundreds of volunteers will sign up and uh, they will have job descriptions and they know exactly what they're doing on that day. You know, to get involved with the Broward Outreach Center, um, a division of the Miami Rescue Mission, we'd love for people to come out. I think the first and foremost is come out and schedule a tour. You know, come, come here, see what we're doing. It's not always money. Money is very good because with money we can provide more for our clients, but it's also their time is very important. They can sometimes come just serve the food. They can sometimes just come and visit. When people see that other people care, that gives them hope. So if your passion is women that are coming out of abuse, uh, domestic violence, homelessness, we know that 85% of our women that come to us are coming uh, because of domestic violence and abuse. I mean, we've done our own internal research and so we know that. Life is not easy, and we don't always feel like we have someone who is there for us. But God is always there. So when you pray and you find the confidence in your heart to be ready, just know that there is always an open door at Miami Rescue Mission.